Joining us now is Ojinik Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you this morning? I'm good, I'm good. People were loving your introduction this weekend. How are you? <laughs> we had a, a great weekend, didn't we? Yes, it's fantastic. Good to see you, Oji. Good and to see you too. Dr. Abati was definitely trending. Yes. So I actually asked the question, <laughs> Anoko, what's your favorite sport? And people said the introduction of Dr. Abati. Of course. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's the highlight of the show. It's Dr. Abati. Well done. <laughs> well, all right. Let's begin what's trending by celebrating the Super Eagles of Nigeria for advancing to the quarterfinals of the Africa Cup of Nations with a comfortable 2-0 win over Cameroon. Social media was awash with reactions over the weekend as Nigerians across the world celebrated with the Eagles. Ademola Lukman scored the two goals, the first assisted by African Footballer of the Year, Victor Osimen, to help secure the Super Eagles' place in the last eighth. Let's go. Oh, it's a beautiful opportunity there. The ball down to the left-hand side, the delivery comes in. Oh, it's a great, it's a great goal! They got a goal! That is fabulous, fabulous play! Oh, the, the follow-up! Well, after the game, the Super Eagles stars were seen celebrating the victory on the field and in a viral video as they sang their victory song. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Songwolu, was also seen in a video celebrating the Eagles' Afghan victory. In a series of tweets, the governor charged the Eagles to maintain their momentum as they advanced to the quarterfinals. France. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was also seen in a video celebrating the Super Eagles' victory over Cameroon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Abati, Tinubu right there in France, I mean celebrating. Everyone was celebrating, including my daughter. <laughs> I mean, it was so amazing to also see how excited it is for, you know, that, uh, what do you call it, camadre, that sports brings to the nation, it's amazing to see. Congratulations to the Super Eagles. I will affirm that they did play well, even though some people were saying yeah, that. well, <laughs> failure is an offer. Absolutely. The success <laughs> attracts everyone. Right. Anyway, and apart from that, in Nigeria, football wields a lot of power over the people's imagination. When Nigeria wins, when Nigeria is playing, you see that football becomes a great unifier. You recall Amaju Pinik, whom we just spoke with, said, in fact, when Nigeria was playing, he didn't hear of any reports of kidnappers because <laughs> even kidnappers were watching football. Love it. And that's the passion yes. with which Nigerians have embraced football. You know, it, it evokes their sense of nationalism. Look at that place where uh, Governor Sonwulu of Lagos State was watching. It was at a viewing center along with... Uh, other people. There will be persons in that room who voted for Labour Party in the last election. There will be persons who voted the PDP. But at that moment, when football, which is a great unifier in Nigeria, had brought all of them together, nobody will remember partisan politics. Mm. In fact, nobody will talk about religion or ethnicity. The, uni the unifier there, the religion in that room, as they were celebrating, was football. And ditto for the president of uh, Nigeria who in the course of his uh, private visit uh, to France was also seen watching uh, 
Nigeria versus Cameroon. And it was just as well that the Super Eagles uh, did not disappoint. They dominated the indomitable Lions. The Eagles proved to be uh, more ferocious, more, uh, you know, deadly uh, than uh, the Lions of, uh, of uh, Cameroon. But we now have Angola to face. Nigeria and Angola have faced each other 11 times. This will be the 11th time since uh, 1981. We've been able to beat them three times. They succeeded twice. Then, of course, in other encounters, it was a draw. But I've been hearing people, it makes them, uh, to be specific, saying that we need to win the next encounter with Angola, if not for anything, for Sam Okwaraji, who died at the uh, Lagos Stadium here, mm. uh, 10 minutes to the end of the game, during an encounter with uh, Angola. But what the Super Eagles should know is that Angola is not a pushover. As uh, Pinnick and others have said, there are no minos in football. If uh, Mozambique can send Ghana away, mm. if Mauritania can send, uh, you know, uh, Algeria out of the tournament, and DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, can deal with the Egyptians, it means anything is possible. But to the extent that Nigerians are very joyous yes. when the country does well, and they forget all their woes and differences, nobody talks politics, I think the Eagles owe us an obligation to keep hope alive, yes. to keep people united and excited by bringing that trophy back home. Absolutely. Well said, Dr. Bati. You know, there was another video that was trending earlier where we saw Shegwo Degbami in Abidjan teaching, you know, a school, predominantly like young uh, Yoruba students, uh, football. It's just that camaraderie. I really, really enjoyed seeing that video as yeah. well. I think I was going to say that this is the renewed hope we yes. signed up for. You know, the hope of the Super Eagles um, restoring or coming back like the Phoenix from when they started, very slow start, and then now they've become the heroes of Nigeria. Let me also mention another aspect of football, beyond just the togetherness it brings and how it just brings um, people to... I, I think we need this win, and I hope that Nigeria gets to win because of all the things we're going through, we need a ray of hope. But Lagos State, and, and because you showed the video of the governor of Lagos State, that's one of the 20 viewing centers which they set up for AFCON 2023. And in these centers across the state, they were giving free food, free popcorns, free drinks, and they're in different parts of the state. But one of the things that we must tap into as well, even though we're not the host nation of AFCON, is the opportunity for business and commerce. You know, through these centers, we know that you know, you're able to sell, especially in the tourism sector, you're able to maximize profit by this nation, you know, the AFCON 2023 going, up, going, going on. It's not just in Ivory Coast, so I mean, so Cote d'Ivoire that would benefit the, you know, the proceeds from this AFCON 2023. Lagos State has taken that step. I hope other states will, states will also do the same because thankfully we haven't heard any violence taking place in these viewing centers. Sometimes, you know, football is a very passionate game and some people might be quite passionate and then there's banter that goes awry. But also very important is that can we behave ourselves on social media? Did you see the dragon of Ghana. <laughs> Ghana, they were sitting on their own. And then the banter, I was laughing my heart off, just reading the different yeah. things that people were saying about, oh, they were going into spaces, X spaces, and just trolling Ghana. Can we just be humble in our, in our, in our, what's, in our, in our joy and yes. our celebration? Let's just bring the home, the cup back home. Absolutely. Then we can troll the rest of Africa. Absolutely. But at the moment, let's just be kind. <laughs> to Talking about viewing centers. Oh. Okay, the Lagos State government, you say, has 32 viewing centers. There has also been corporate sector involvement. Nigerian breweries, through their gold work drink yeah. and live beer, they also have viewing centers, you know, nature in Port Harcourt and here in Lagos. But the difference in their way is that I hear they organize competitions. Mm -hmm. And if you win, you get, uh, you get a good package of a gift. I, I thought uh, Aaron would come today to tell me where <laughs> the Lagos Center is so that the next uh, one, I will go there too and make prediction. Maybe I will win uh, a supply of gold bag or live beer for the rest of the year. But it's uh, your favorite drink now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, all right. We are charging the Super Eagles of Nigeria not to agree. Bring back that cup home. Congratulations again. Well, let's take another story. Former Anambra State Governor and Presidential Candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, 
has reacted to the state of the nation in the wake of the steep decline of the country's currency. In an interview with the Vanguard newspaper, Peter Obi noted that the average Nigerian should be able to judge the performance of President Tinubu since he assumed office on May 29, 2023, adding that Tinubu should be in the Guinness World Records for causing Nigerians the most hardship. Tinubu had on the 21st of November 2023 bragged about his reforms while addressing groups of investors at the 10th German Nigerian Business Forum in Berlin, stating that he deserves recognition from the Guinness World Records for the economic reforms he has introduced since assuming office. Nigeria voted for me for reforms. And from day one of my inauguration, I started the reform, day one. To me, if you didn't mention me, the Guinness Book of Records on it. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to find a way to insert myself. <laughs> because I did it without expectation. Well, Peter Obi in that interview said uh, he may actually be correct when he claims that his name deserves to be in the Guinness World Records. Don't forget that people's names don't always make it into the Guinness World Records for only altruistic reasons. So it depends on which angle he is coming from. If the idea is to put his name on the Guinness Book of World Records for causing Nigerians the most hardship untold hardship. Of course, he's spot on, and I will totally agree with him because his reforms are not achieving what they are meant to achieve. Dr. Abati. Well, as they say in circumstances like this, yeah, of course. what do you expect Mr. Peter Obi to say? He was uh, one of the major presidential candidates in the 2023 general election, which uh, assured you uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the uh, All Progressives Congress won. If spokespersons of uh, the president were to respond, they would say, oh, it's sour grapes. Uh, uh, Mr. Peter Obi is condemning uh, uh, the president because he lost out to him, not just at the polls, but also all the way to the Supreme Court. However, the point, the counterpoint that we always make is that it is the job of the opposition to criticize the government. And that what the opposition this time around has shown, whether it is Mr. Pito B or Waziri Atuku Abubakar, they are beginning to show a confi real confidence to hold the sitting government at the centre to task and to raise questions and to ask questions. And it's not just a matter of opinion, it's also a matter of perception. Um, Mr. Pito B is saying, so far, we can assess the Tinubu administration. There are some people, I think we had a guest today also, who was saying, well, it's too early in the day. Yeah. Let us yeah. give them uh, a whole year. That was Lai Omotola, right? Yeah. Let's, let's give them a whole year before we begin to assess. But the same government themselves have started assessing themselves. President Tinubu has directed that a committee of 140 persons be put together to assess the performance of the ministers. What, what I find curious there is why you will need 140 persons to assess the performance of uh, 46 ministers when it is so clear that some uh, people in that cabinet are passengers. Yes. For some of them are so uh, uh, unknown, uh, are so absent that Nigerians don't even know that they, are, they have ministerial uh, appointments. The, uh, there's another group that is perpetually putting their feet in their mouths. And each time they open their mouths like this, they will cause problems. Either they are quoting wrong statistics or they are saying things they know nothing about. Not to talk of uh, the other crowd that have been implicated in all kinds of things. So the assessment has begun. And those who are saying, let us wait for uh, till it is one year. That one year is almost here. It's here. <laughs> this is uh, February, right? Well, you are, you are. Uh, yeah, February, February is here. Yeah, it's a few days uh, from, from here. And then, of course, you know, the one year will be here. So the question is, what would the administration be remembered for, be known for one year after? We used to talk about 100 days in office. Now some people have moved the goalposts to one year. Okay, the one year will soon be here. And we will take a look at the reforms. We will take a look at what has been done with infrastructure. We will take a look at what has been done even in terms of the style 
of governance. And we will take a look at uh, some of the key things that, that uh, you know, the administration has done. I'm sure we have not had the last from uh, Mr. Peter Obi. He will speak again and again. Mm. And I position, hope nobody, yeah. I hope nobody will be funny enough to go and issue a statement, the kind of statement with which I started. That, oh, it is sour grapes, <laughs> eh, Mr. Peter Obi, because the spokesperson is, you know, <laughs> to be seen to be working. Right. The, the standard practice is to abuse anybody who raises a point. Yeah. As for Guinness Book of uh, World Records, well, I don't know, <laughs> because you have to apply to get into the Guinness Book yeah. of World Records. And I don't see the Nigerian president going to apply for any kind of notation yeah. in the Guinness Book of World Records. But of course, Peter Obi and of course, Atiku Abubakar are the strong opposition. Yeah. You know, Peter Obi has a way with words and, you know, it's just showing how difficult it is to live at this time in Nigeria. Even just mentioning the security situation. I believe even over the weekend, Dr. Bati um, I we were discussing that um, story of the uh, Middle Belt Forum. Yeah. I believe they, these people are called the Funam Group. They yes. had brought out a statement threatening fire and brimstone because they arrested or they claim that they arrested uh, the president of the Meiti Ala Kotohori group. Bello Bodejo. Bo Bello Bodejo. Yes. Which, is, which the DSS had said yes. that they don't have in their custody. I mean, we are seeing economic hardship. We are seeing insecurity. We are seeing people being killed on a daily basis in Nigeria. I mean, what's your take on that statement, that Funam statement, before we move Well, move so in, in terms of the statement and coming out to say that, you know, hailing um, fire and brimstone, I think it's important that it, to link it with the, the, the state of the economy. Yeah. Because we had talked about the Mieti Ala situation mm -hmm. last week, and we had said that it is an admittance of failure when different groups decide to set up their vigilante groups in order to um, address insecurity situations. Now, where we have um, statements from groups and um, threats here and there, it speaks to a total breakdown of law and order, a state of anarchy almost, where um, Groups of people are um, um, threatening to take matters into their own hands and also raises up the question that where then is the president of Mieti Allah? Mm -hmm. If security agencies are saying that he's, he's not with them, their groups are saying, oh, he's with them and they should release him, then where are we? And unfortunately, there's a lack of trust in the, and I'm sorry to say, lack of trust in statements made like that because in the past we have seen situations where the ball is passed from, passed from one person to the other saying, right. I don't have, and it's not quite the situation. So I believe that security agencies, whether the DSS, the police, or anyone who's responsible ought to um, give a true sense or a statement as to what is really going on, now, as to where he is. But very importantly, OG, um, talking about sour grapes and what the opposition, um, and the mem a member of the opposition, in the person of Mr. Peter Obi has said, what he has said is clearly, clearly the truth because mm -hmm. you can measure it. You know, if I would often say empirical data, it is clear that a lot of Nigerians have been plunged further into poverty yes. with some of the reforms and policy direction of this particular administration. And so I'm hoping that this, rather than coming out preparing a speech to counter what has been mm -hmm. said, they should go back. They should go back to the drawing board and reevaluate some of the policies and announcements that they have made. Yes. Where there is a, a mistake made, or perhaps you see that the policy direction isn't favourable, it's important to go back to the drawing board. Absolutely. Don't stick to the guns and say no. This is the way. The only people who seem to be praising the efforts in its entirety are foreign organisations, IMF, World Bank, you know, the United States. But the Nigerian people, including the people who are in the president's constituency, are saying that they are hungry, that they need food to eat. We see fuel price has gone up, businesses are closing down, and so these are certain concerns. And finally, just to mention some of the ministers that Dr. Batia alluded to, because <laughs> we ourselves, we don't need to be part of the 140 people to um, join the act. Where's the minister of, um, I mean, still development, where's the minister of state agriculture and food security? Where is the minister of tourism? There are certain ministers who have been very quiet Absolutely. since the administration began. So just a Absolutely. few questions. Yeah. Let me just quickly read number six of that uh, statement that they released. And this is from Funam. And the person who wrote this statement wrote it on July, or two people actually, January 24th. And this is a call to the DSS and all the security forces. The person's name is Uma Amir Shehu and Badu Salisu Amadu. They call, they're saying that if the Play 2 people don't leave Play 2 state, that there's going to be jihad. Number six, we call on non Fulani people to vacate Play 2 state, Kaduna and Benue states, if they are not ready to live under the inevitable jihad, 
which will eventually be all over Nigeria. Well, I mean, right. <laughs> this is where we have found ourselves. Yes. Whereby a group, FUNAM, by the way, means Fulani Nationalist Movement. And it's unfortunate that up to this moment, the two gentlemen mm -hmm. have not come forward to say their names are being used in vain and it is not their deed or that they did not use, issue the statement. For anyone to come up and say we're declaring a jihad in every town, every village, yes. every part of Nigeria, that in itself is, is, is an action against the Nigerian state. It's an act of uh, uh, provocation and insensitive and incitement. Absolutely. Because right. they are also saying Fulanis in every part of Nigeria should join the jihad against other Nigerians. Unacceptable. I mean, Very important. you have called out appropriately the Department of State Services. Yeah not to allow people to engage in this kind of uh, behavior. Well, all right. We shall take our final story. Cherry one. The governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, has reacted to a viral video showing Tanya Akpala, a former tennis champion who represented Nigeria in tennis competitions in the 1990s, roaming the streets of Oka over the weekend. Tanya, who is mixed race, in the video said that she had been trolled many times because of her heritage. Her mother is from Belarus, while her father is of Igbo extraction. According to reports, she played tournaments with Jacqueline Okweze, who is now a criminal defense attorney in Houston, Texas. Tanya was found on Abakaliki Street nursing a wound. The video caught the attention of the Anambra State Governor, who said in a post on X that Tanya is now in the custody of the Anambra State Government and that they will ensure her rehabilitation and fruitful reunion with her family. I thought it was important to highlight this story. The story was trending all yeah. over social media. It is good that the Governor has taken you know, her into their custody and we hope for, you know, a good rehabilitation for Tanya. Great she needs story. to be helped. She needs yeah. to be helped. And enough of that, uh, you know, bigotry. And someone who's mixed race is a human being. Enough of that. Well, all right. I'd love to thank you both for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.